I'm Kevin Verstrepen. I'm a geneticist and a microbiologist working at the University of Leuven and VIB in uh, Belgium. I'm here with Professor Kevin. We are shortly after him finishing his session, so everything is fresh in our minds. And I'm very interested to learn how did your session go? What was the topic? I was in the session of uh, metabolism, which was interesting. It's not a session I'm often in, but it was fantastic. Uh, we had a mix of, of people talking about metabolic models and then people like me maybe studying more the molecular aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And you gave a talk, right, in that session as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking about the lag phase. So this, this phase that I think all microbiologists know, right, sort of a, a adaptation phase when, when microbes switch between one environment to the other, they stop growing and they have to adapt. And we've been studying one specific lag phase in, in yeast, in Saccharomyces, where they transition from glucose to another carbon source, like maltose. Uh, and, and we've been trying to figure out what happens in that phase and, and specifically what determines the length of this adaptation phase mm -hmm. of the lag phase. Yeah, it's very interesting because I know for me when I was growing bacteria, I was more interested on the exponential phase just to see how how long do I have to wait until my bacteria reach a certain CFQ? But it's very interesting that you are investigating the lag phase. So how did that come about? <laughs> well, it's a funny story um, and, and it's a true story. This happened, or we started looking at this uh, more than 10 years ago when my lab was back in, in the US. Um, there was a brewer who called me um, asking me why his yeast had such trouble starting to grow on maltose, which is the main sugar in beer medium, uh, after he pre-grew the yeast on glucose, which he did in the lab. And then he, he always saw a long lag phase. He didn't know the word lag phase. But, uh, and that really triggered, that sparked this uh, interest. And, and uh, I, there just happened to uh, be one grad student who walked in my office literally the same week looking for a, a project that was somehow a bit beer related. And so we put it together and he started working on this. Uh, this is uh, uh, Aaron Yu. And um, yeah, so it took us 10 years and we're still finding out new things. Yeah. yeah and so what does it, your research so, show so far about the lag phase? You know, is it something that is conserved? Mm -hmm, is it mm -hmm. variable? So, yeah, all of those things. So the lag phase is always there when, when these microbes need to change. but but. It is extremely variable, so different yeast strains, um, so genetically different yeasts have uh, very different lag phases, so some can adapt very quickly and, and resume growth quickly, and others take much longer. But even more interestingly, you have genetically identical cells, a whole population that are sitting in, in the same environment, and you, you have to go to make the switch, and some take ages, and others do it in, in a matter of two hours, and, and others even never make it. They never make the switch, uh, which you don't see at the population level, because if you're looking at your tubes, yeah, you see that growth slows down, and then after a few hours it picks up again, the classic sort of bimodal behavior. But when you look at the individual cells, you see that actually many cells don't switch, which didn't make any sense to us. Um, and then a few start growing and of course they multiply and then you get mm -hmm. exponential growth anyway. Yeah, interesting. And for example, this variable, let's say lag phase, does it have an effect on the overall fitness? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's another really good question. You would, you would think that being fast is always better, right? Because you're in, a, in, in an environment, the, your glucose, your favorite sugar is run out and you need to adapt to the new environment. Mm -hmm. You better face up and start growing. And in the meantime, your competitors might already start growing on the new source. So um, it makes sense to have a short lag phase. So why do some cells or strains have a long lag phase? It turns out, and, and that is something we, we're, we haven't really published yet, um, that the cells with a long lag phase actually have a benefit in the constant environment. They grow a little bit quicker, probably because they're fully committed to that environment, mm -hmm. uh, have optimized their metabolism, but then it takes them longer to adapt yeah. to the new one. Yeah, and my final question is towards more like the application side. So, we, you know, your research shows stuff about the lag phase and then how would that be helpful in the application, for example, in the beer brewing? Yeah. Uh, that sort of ties back then to the whole beginning of the story, right? We had this brewer coming with this question and, and that never left our mind. So um, we, we just received a, a proof of uh, concept grant from the ERC um, to, to investigate 
exactly the, the um, application side. So can we now use what we've learned and we've identified pieces of DNA, a new gene that influences the like phase, can we use this to make strains that uh, are more efficient at transitioning and, and therefore maybe more efficient in industrial uh, practices like beer brewing, but not just beer brewing. So that's exactly something that we're, um, that we're figuring out at this very moment now. So I was made aware that you were also involved in an online course called uh, Science of Brewing, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a real fun one. It's a, it's a free online course uh, about well, the science of brewing. Uh, a large part of it is microbiology because it's people in my lab who made the course and, and myself. Um, and it's a fantastic course to recommend to anyone, to maybe your parents or friends who wonder what you're really doing and why they should care. Um, because it starts from a quite basic level and it introduces them to many of the key aspects of biochemistry and microbiology and even a bit of engineering, but then always using the topic of beer, which is usually quite interesting to many of us, right? Even people who don't care about microbiology so yeah. much. Everything, everyone can relate, right? Exactly. So, so in, in the two years that we've had it out now, uh, more than 16,000 people took it uh, and, and the reactions have been quite, quite overwhelmingly positive. So you can, you can Google it. It's on the edX platform, uh, quite a well-known platform for free courses. So, so yeah. Uh, please go and take it. It's a, I think it's a, it's a fun course and you learn a lot about beer. And like I said, if you don't know microbiology, you even learn something about microbiology. Mm -hmm. Great, very interesting. And just to enter the interview, I just wanted to ask you about this, this conference, I guess. For most of us, it's the, our first in-person conference for quite a while. How are you finding the overall experience of being back to, to having mm. all those people around you networking? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's one of those things where you only uh, realize how important it is when, when you don't have it anymore. To be honest, uh, before the pandemic, I was, like many of us, I guess, I was getting maybe fed up with too many conferences. Oh, I have to travel again, leave my family um, almost every week. And then it was quite of a relief, maybe the first lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, after in Belgium, we're now at the, well, we went through three and I haven't traveled for a year and a half, no live conferences. So then it's so fantastic then to, to come to a conference again and, and talk face to face to people. Uh, it is much nicer than behind mm -hmm. the screen. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. So, so yeah, that's, that's all I had for you today. Thanks so much for your time and enjoy the, the rest of the conference.